Stock valuation is as old as the financial markets, and there are many ways that we can go about valuing a company. In this video, I will explore a formula for stock valuation by Warren Buffett's mentor, Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing. And if you've seen some of my videos, you will know that this valuation is also a method that I'm using. Value investing is buying stocks below their intrinsic value. And the intrinsic value is calculated based on a company's assets, earnings, etc. Intrinsic value can be calculated using various financial models, but not all retail investors know how to use these financial models. Benjamin Graham made a formula that has since been revised because at the time of origin, the growth we see from companies today was unheard of. So in this video, I want to teach you how to make your own automated spreadsheet to do an intrinsic value calculation based on the revised edition of the formula. So I've opened up a new Google Sheet spreadsheet and that is because we're going to use an automated function that Google Spreadsheets offer called Google Finance. Here you can see the original formula in black from Benjamin Graham where we had the base PE for a company with no growth at 8.5. In the revised edition it's 7 and also we had a multiplier for the growth rate of the company where it was multiplied by 2 but in the revised edition it's only multiplied by one. So let's start building the model. The first thing we need is our stock ticker. And in this case, we are going to start by using Apple. The next thing in the formula you can see we're going to need is the EPS or earnings per share. So we are going to write EPS. And here's already where we're going to use the automated function of Google Spreadsheet. So we are going to write equal sign Google Finance, open parenthesis. We're going to refer it to this cell. And then I'm going to write a semicolon. You might need to just use a comma. That depends on where you are in the world. I need to use semicolon. In the US, I think it's only a comma, but if it doesn't work, you know why. And then we're going to write EPS and end the parentheses. And you can see here, it starts to say loading and then it finds the EPS of Apple. We can check this by checking any other stock in here, for example, Tesla. And then we see that it changes the EPS. So back to Apple. Then we're going to need the base PE for a company with no growth. So we say base PE. And in this case, in revised edition, it's seven. And then we're going to have a growth rate for the next five years. And to do that, we're going into Yahoo Finance. So you have Yahoo Finance here, and then you can simply write the stock ticker, Apple in this case, go into Apple. Under this side here, where you have analysis, you can go in here, scroll down to the bottom where you have growth estimates. And they say that for the next five years, they expect 9.48. And if you go up to the top, you can see here how many analysts are covering. So you have earnings estimates and revenue estimates 27 and 24. And I think those guys are way better than me than estimating what Apple is going to grow with compared to if I wanted to do it myself. So I am using this. Obviously you can adjust this number, but for now let's use 9.48. So back to our spreadsheet, we are going to put in 9.48 and you might need to use a dot instead of a comma, again, depending on where you are in the world. Then we do have our multiplier of 1G. So we write 1G here and since it's just one, we write one. Then we are going to use the average yield of AAA corporate bonds. And in the formula, this is 4.4. So we're going to write 4.4 here. The last thing we need is Y, and that is the current yield of AAA corporate bonds. So let's press Y here. And if you go on Google and write yield AAA corporate bonds, you will get this site. I will link it down in the description as well. You can see up here that for July 2022, it's 4.06 and it is updated on a monthly basis and it was last updated the 1st of August. So in roughly 10 days from now, this will be updated once again and then you have to change it in the formula. But for now, let's just use 4. So back to our spreadsheet, we're going to punch in 4 here. So now we're going to calculate the intrinsic value of Apple. So let's use all the inputs we have found so far. So we start with a equal sign. And then we take the EPS, start with open parentheses, press EPS, and then we multiply that by another open parentheses where we have our base PE of no growth of seven Add another open parentheses where we have one multiplied by G, the growth rate. We close those two parentheses and then we multiply that by the average yield of AAA corporate bonds as we see up here. And then we close that parentheses and divide it by the current yield of the AAA corporate bonds as we have right here. So now we see here that the intrinsic value is 109.6744. 
So if we do that, we go to format it a bit for dollar. Looks a bit nicer. Then we now have the intrinsic value of Apple of $109 based on the inputs we have given it. So now you can actually stop here if you want, because now you do have the intrinsic value, but let's take it a little bit further. So if we write down here, current price, then we can use another Google function, Google finance function, where we do once again, stock ticker, and then we say price. So now it automatically fetches the current price, which is 171. So let's format that once again to dollars as well to have it looks a bit nicer. So you can see here that there is a difference obviously between the two. So if we want to calculate that difference, we can do like this in percentages at least. So we're going to take a open parentheses. We're going to take this divided by the intrinsic value minus one, and then we can change that to percentage. And now there is a 56% difference between the current price and the intrinsic value. So this difference will tell you how much of a discount there is. In this case, you are paying 56% more as a premium compared to the intrinsic value. And if, if this was a negative number, you will have a discount. But let's also apply something called a margin of safety because we don't want to buy at the fair value as value investors. We would like to get an even better bargain. So here we can, for example, say 10%, press the percentage time so it will calculate it correctly. Down here we can say acceptable buy price. So now what we want to do is to automate our spreadsheet a bit more. So it calculates an acceptable buy price based on the margin of safety that we put in. And that we can easily do by clicking at the sale here, equal signs, the intrinsic value multiplied by one minus our margin of safety. So you can see here that it automatically withdraws 10% from the intrinsic value. And if we change this to 20, you can see that it drops even further. And if we put in 100, it should set zero. Correct. Back again to 10%. Now let's clean the spreadsheet up a little bit so we know which manual inputs we need to do every time we want to use this tool. So let's start up here because the stock ticker is something that we need to change every time. And the EPS is automatically calculated based on this. The base P is seven. The growth rate is something that we need to change. So let's do this as well. The 1G is also one. The average yield is fixed at 4.4. The current yield is something that we need to check even though it's only once a month. So that is also something that we need to change. And of course, there's the last one here. There's also the margin of safety that you can use a bit different depending on which stock you want to calculate on. So now we're going to come down here at the bottom and put in our verdict and we're going to use an if statement. So it says equal signs if open parentheses our acceptable buy price is higher than the current price, then buy and if not, wait or sell. And to do this even a bit more, we can go in here, we can go into our conditional formatting and then we can say that for this sell, if it has buy, then put it green. And if we have sell, we can make it red. So let's check it with another stock. Let's for example, go for Stanley Black & Dagger SWK. So you can see here that a lot of stuff is already going into the spreadsheet and we go back into Yahoo Finance. We go Stanley Black & Dagger into the analysis tab, scroll down to the bottom, and we can see that for the next five years per year, it's expected to grow at 13.3%. So if we jump back to our spreadsheet, we put in 13. The yield of AAA corporate bonds are four because we just looked it up previously. And you can see here that intrinsic value is 134 compared to the current price of $98. The difference is minus 26%, which is a discount. And we put in the margin of safety of 10%. We can even go with as high, maybe like 25%. And you can see here that acceptable buy price is still $100. And since the acceptable buy price is bigger than the current price, it is a buy according to the model. So obviously you can format this to look a lot more nice like I did. But in an essence, this is the Benjamin Graham valuation model. And you don't really need to do anything more than to put in the different colored cells that I've colored here to have it working and use the Yahoo Finance Analysis tab and the AAA corporate bond current yield. So let me know down in the comments if this is a valuation model you are going to use in the future. I would love to hear so. And thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.